Mi gente, I need your help. Look, the real game behind podcasts is we need to really understand our demo, a.k.a. you, our audience, so that when we go out to sponsors who help us put on this amazing show and deliver this content to you, that they can clearly understand who we serve and what is significant to you and what you value. And the only way for us to get that information is for you to give it to us. So we just created this survey. I'll put it in the show notes. It will take you less than three minutes literally but it will be so helpful for us to get a better understanding of what it is that you care about what's important to you what do you value so that when we're out in these streets trying to secure the big bag and get sponsors for this show they know exactly who our audience is and what you care about so we can bring you the best products we can bring you the best organizations that are out here serving the cultura the community you so please take a moment and fill out the survey i'll link it in the show notes appreciate you But I think it's okay to stop. You know, we're taught to keep going. Women, no, 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 you can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Like, no, sometimes we need a little, like, breaks. Mm -hmm. I loved it too, but I was like, you know, why am I not making money for my funny? You know? Ooh, I like that line. You know what I'm saying? Make the side hustle your main hustle. But I'm like, yeah, but the side hustle ain't going to give me the main hustle paycheck, you know? So I kept just doing both. The sperm was probably like, nah, we ain't going to fertilize shit because (laughs) she's not happy and we're not going to penetrate the walls of her egg. This is what is so inspiring about your story, and thank you for your transparency. I am finding my happy. I found a lot of it. I'm still looking for some more. I don't know if you can get it at Walmart, Target. I do find my happy at Target, actually. (laughs) Oh my God, pero hello. (laughs) Can I curse? Is that okay? Hola, mi gente. Welcome back to Banking on Cultura. I am your host, Victoria Jen Rodriguez, and I'm very excited about today's guest because you're going to laugh your ass off. Like, she has this energy. She has this aura about her. She actually is really a comedian. She wears so many hats. So let's get right into it, shall we? So she's an actor, producer, profesor, writer, philanthropist, podcaster, voiceover artist, and marketer. She's a member of the Entertainment Creative Collaborative Outreach Program, bringing her to the U.S. Senate and White House, advising officials on key issues and initiatives in the entertainment industry, driving policy and legislation. As a producer, her short film, The Swimmers, has been featured in the 2021 Official Latino Film Festival and the 2023 Dominican Film Festival. Oh, she produces custom content for premium brands such as Wendy's, Frito Lay, McDonald's, The Your Beauty, The U.S. Census, Latina.com, and the list goes on. Prior to her creative journey, she was a marketing executive at Latina, People in Español, as well as Heineken USA. And I'm talking about none other than the Miss Rachel Strauss, Rachel La Loca. Welcome to Banking on Cultura. Oh my God, pero hello. <laughs> What an intro, Jesus. Is that recorded? I guess it is. Can I play that over and over again, like every morning to get yes. me like up and at them? Yes. Thank you. Make it a part of your morning routine. Hi, sis. Hi, babe. You know what? This is so like angelic right now because the way that we met, you were actually hosting. Can we call it a showcase? Go for it. So it was a showcase <laughs> in Napa Valley with a whole bunch of well educated, influenced Latinos with edge because we got swaggy out uh-huh. there. And you hosted this showcase and you were looking for a volunteer. And of course, <laughs> me, I raised my hand immediately and I was like, me, 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 put me on stage. <laughs> Yo, that was the best. So I was doing a pop-up podcast, Latinos Out Loud style, and I was doing this like improv activity where I was pretending to do the first Latina late night show. Yes. And I needed like a fake director, a fake person to hold up the applause sign, and like a fake script supervisor and you volunteered for all three things the multitasker that you are period (laughs) it was so great and like i went out to like put on my costume or like my change of outfit and you really got the crowd hype you that was like your foray into podcasting and you ain't even know it you might be right darling because (laughs) i felt alive when i was up there okay and i was like just give me a mic and this is where i belong and we just played like off each other so well it was like we planned it yo girl i could not have planned that better (laughs) meanwhile it wasn't really planned it was like all improv i "God, I hope this goes well and you nailed it for me and for us and for everyone in the audience in napa and now we're here and now we're here and now you're like a sister to me like oh thank you hermana i appreciate that because you need fellow latina sisters 
Yes. Okay, because there's too many of us that are catty towards one of another, and we need to like do more love. You yeah. know what I'm saying? More and more. Elevate each other. More and more. I love what you're doing, and I'm so proud of you. Thank this is you. so beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome to my beautiful set. You know, I, I mean, it. We, the we real fake customize. wall. No, this yes. is so great. <laughs> this is the real fake wall. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, for those who are listening, hop over on the YouTube street so you can see what we're talking about. So, we like to start this show. With some washing shit. So give oh, us something we, we cannot Google about you right now. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, okay, here's something. I A lot of changes going on in my life uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, I was married for a long time, and now I'm getting divorced. Mm. Yeah. How does that feel? Do you feel like you're a brand new woman? Do you feel like you're entering a new chapter? Like, girl, I what do. are you going through? Um, it's been a, like years in the making, you know. Uh, we came to terms with it. He's the father of my two children, and I really appreciate his status and what he does for these kids. But I do feel like a new woman. <laughs> I want to say, and his sperm so bad. <laughs> Yo, I said that mad times. Shout out to his sperm, his semen. You know what I'm saying? The swimmers is based on his sperm. So there's a story there. Yeah, shout out to everybody who's got semen. Okay? You know, I see you men. Um, but yeah, you know, just changes in my life. I met him so young. So yeah, I was just out of high school in college. And I've grown. I've evolved. I haven't changed. Because I don't think we change. But we evolve for mm-hmm. sure. And just after so many years, a career change a religion change you know a change from not being a mom to being a mom I really love who I am today and I have to put her first and putting her first means I have to move on from this marriage I love that that must feel so like powerful and like freeing to like be like it's happening years in the making but it is happening now. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now when I hear somebody's getting divorced, I say congratulations because it's like, it's a lot to go through. And even though it might be sad because it's the routine of it all, comfortable, you might have really loved this person and it's the end of something you thought was going to last forever. It's congratulations because now you have the opportunity to reinvent yourself. And how exciting is that? I really didn't look at it that way, but thank you for shedding that light because it truly is. I'm still like unpacking all of this, you know, even though it's been years and we're going through paperwork and everything. I have two children. So that's sort of the sad part of it all. For a while, I felt like the disruptor, like I'm shaking the apple cart. I'm like making this family go different directions. But I think it's the right direction. And if mommy's happy, then the children will be happy and the household will be happy. And I feel happy, girl. I love that. Uh, What a blessing to find your happy. That's what I've I've been on this crusade to find my happy. You know, every step of this crusade, you know, everywhere, like my soul has traveled. I've been updating you and you've been giving me so much encouragement. Again, Latina to Latina. I love you, girl. Thank you for all that uplifting and empowerment. Cause yeah, I am finding my happy. I found a lot of it. I'm still looking for some more. I don't know if you could get it at Walmart, (laughs) Target. I do find my happy at Target, actually. (laughs) Same. I find my happy at retail. Um, Oh, I found this new store. It's called Home Sense. Have you ever been to it? No. Girl. Put me on. It is like, you know how Marshalls has like the home. I am such a Max in the back. Marshalls girl, yes. So Home Sense is like that times 10 and what? super affordable. Say what now? It's called Home Sense. My boo put me on to wait uh, this past weekend. Okay. Obsessed. I'm Check on it. it Home, Home Sense. Sense. Locking it in. in Lock it in. Home Sense. <laughs> Anywho, so we're getting divorced, entering this new chapter, and you are no stranger to reinvention because you actually was able to transition out of corporate into this creative space, make a name for yourself, rebrand yourself, and really tap into what fulfills you and makes your heart smile. And I want to talk about that because a lot of the folks who tune into Banking on Cultura are in this space of either reinvention, they're thinking about the next chapter, they're making the transition from the nine to five grind to entrepreneurship, or they're thinking about it. So I think your story is going to resonate well. So talk to us about that journey. How was the transition to corporate to this creative space? What brought about it? 
and walk us through the process of it all. Wow, girl, I'm going to try to be as concise as possible because that also took years in the making. I went to school, got my bachelor's degree in business management finance with a minor in Latino studies. And when I was in school, I said to myself, I'm going to do something for my people. I want to be a marketer, but I also want to adelantar la raza y nuestra cultura. So I wanted to sort of marry that. And that like multicultural marketing department didn't exist when I graduated. So somehow, some way, I landed a job at Latina. Uh, this was years after I graduated. I had to work in like, you know, for other people first in order to make my uh, entrance into the like multicultural <laughs> segment. The entrance. But shout out to Chale Castillo, who gave me my first uh, in in this like space. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved doing events and putting together advertiser-based programs for our people because there was always these projects with purpose. You know, it wasn't just me like doing things that I didn't believe in. I was working for brands that I read and consumed myself. I read Latina Magazine like clockwork, okay, throughout like my last years of high school and college. So it was like my dream job to be there. Working at People in Español, the same thing. I'm like working for the number one brand that serves our community for fashion and beauty and life lifestyle and celebrity bolchinche and mm-hmm. like doing these amazing red carpet events and I really love being there at the center at the epicenter of it and providing it to the community but there was always something like a box that wasn't checked and I felt it every night and that's when I would go do my comedy on the side I'd be doing the shows I'd be doing you know the content you know submitting self-taping doing all the acting stuff the grind but all of that as like my side hustle And I just kept feeling like this snowball of like, make the side hustle your main hustle. But I'm like, yeah, but the side hustle ain't going to give me the main hustle paycheck, you know? So I kept just doing both. I mean, people at the office, I was like the office comedian. I felt like my office was like the deli counter. Like people would put their stuff to print at the printer and then knock on my office door like, make me laugh. And I'm like, (laughs) I got a deck to do also right now. I'm also working on PowerPoint, but okay, here we go. You know, and I would just like deliver these jokes. And I really was the office this clown people came to me for that like you know oh i just had a crappy meeting like what could you do to make me feel better i'd be like come on in i got the remedio you know like (laughs) the freaking comedy curandera of the office i love it yeah i loved it too but i was like you know why am i not making money for my funny you know oh i like that you know what i'm saying i'm not making money for my funny and it was time so years later years and years and different jobs later you know i landed a great gig at heineken and i was pregnant and nobody knew imagina they working at a beer company pregnant you know this it's a dutch owned company family owned business and so people are like really familial and like going out for beers after work and even during work you know like, like trying the new products in the, in the boardrooms and i'd like sip and spit and like nobody would know I'd be like, oh, it's really good <laughs> you know and like spit it back in um because i also you know was diagnosed infertile and it was really hard for me to get pregnant so when i finally got pregnant and it was sticking i'm like oh i'm gonna take care of this baby this belly like Like, if it were a baby. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, like, I was really very cautious. No drinking, no nothing. I was in a bubble. And, again, this, like, now enter motherhood. This other box that I really wanted to check so badly. I was like, you know, you can't juggle everything, you know. You have to put at least one ball down, right? So, let's talk about this because this is a pivotal part of your story of what transitioned you out to corporate and really doubled down on you was actually your infertility journey. Yeah. So can you talk to us, because Latinas do not talk about this enough, about where it started. Yeah. So it started where you had to make a difficult decision, and then you had all of these uh, events that followed that led you to now this place of happy. So run us through Okay. The events. Everybody get comfortable. Okay. If, is, if you didn't already. Uh, and grab a Kleenex maybe. Or use your sleeve. It's fine. Um, so I did get pregnant the natural way. Shout out to Seaman again. And I had to terminate that pregnancy at 16 weeks. This is in 2012 because of a genetic abnormality. The pregnancy was going so smooth and we were celebrating. It was a girl. I was going to name her Luna. Um, and I have her uh, a moon tattooed on my wrist just as a daily reminder she's sleeping 
Aww. here she is. Um, just as uh, it's it's not so much to be reminded of sadness; it's to be reminded of the strength that it took to get to that point. And I just want to honor her, um, and I'm still honoring her, and you know, figuring that out. Pero it was a very difficult decision, as you mentioned. You know, you get pregnant, you're like, great, this is wonderful. Let me share the news. I told people at work. I started showing, and then I had to terminate because I got educated on what this genetic abnormality could lead to. And that's the other thing that there's just this miseducation on, you know, we think, oh, go through with the pregnancy, take the chance. But I would have put so much at risk had I moved forward with that pregnancy girl, like heart deformation, the requirement of open heart surgery upon birth, a stillborn, me getting sick from it. So I decided to terminate went through a very, really dark period of my life, you know, for about a year, you know, if I had to like put a time frame on it, where I really didn't think I would ever make people laugh again. Because here I was not laughing myself, just crying all the time and weeping and woe is me. And, you know, that abnormality affected one in 1000 women. And I'm like, why? Why am I the one? Why am, why am I the one in 1000? What about the other 999 biatches? Like, <laughs> what, what, what happened there? But right. I'll tell you how I came to terms with that is like God chose me. God chose me to be that one because he knew I would make it because mm -hmm. he knew I would persevere and maybe go through. Oh, oh God, where the Kleenex. Um, <laughs> hold it together. Hold, hold it together. together I am not wearing waterproof mascara. <laughs> you don't want to see that look. It's like the Instagram filter with like the black underneath. You don't want to see it. God chose me because. He knew deep down, and I didn't even know that I'd have the strength. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. He knew I would have the strength to make it, to make the right choices, you know, to not drink my way into a depression, to not do any kind of drogas. I don't do drugs. It's, you know, crazy. But I did entertain it. I was like, I'm going to do every single drug that exists to get me out of this depression. But then my friends and close ones were like, girl, you don't do drugs. You like chicken <laughs> shit. Like, why would you ever? Can I curse? Is that okay? Yes. Like, I am mad chicken. Um, <laughs> like, you know, so I just got through it. Um, and comedy actually helped me because I was able to pick everything back up and be like, hold up. Let me check myself real quick because I know I was put on this earth to shift mindsets to make people's days brighter. And so what am I going to look like chickening out from that and not doing what I was meant to be and meant to do? So I got my act together, literally got my act together, you know, wrote a one woman show about it, wrote a film about it, started taking all that sadness and redirecting it and putting it towards creative use, mm -hmm. which I think we can all do, you know, whether you blog or you keep a diary or you just talk to people. Which is a great gem, like when you're going through something that traumatic and something where you find yourself in this black hole, find the creative outlet. Yeah. I think that's like a key strategy to drive home for people. So you got your act together, your resilience kicked in, you held it down, and then you decided to try again. Yeah, I decided to try again, but it was really, really hard. Um, I had a few miscarriages, and so I decided to seek out some help. You know, we're also taught, like, we're not taught actually about infertility in this community. I mean, I'm half Russian Jewish and half Dominican. And I have like all the fertile myrtles on one side and all the fertile mirtas on the other. You know, like cousins popping out six, seven kids. And they're like, ay, pero que pasó con Raquelita? And like, Raquelita tiene el toto roto. You know? <laughs> yeah. Not toto roto. I mean, they told oh me I had God. a broken toto. And I was like, wait a minute. She looks good to me. We've gotten pregnant before her and I. So what's happening now? So like, yeah, I came to terms with this like semi toto roto. And I went to see a reproductive of endocrinologist and she's like we can help you so i started with clomid which is sort of the non-invasive route just popping pills to make your eggs fluffier um and that didn't work but it gave me terrible headaches um and then after that i graduated to iui intrauterine insemination i did three rounds of that and then i went on to ivf i did iui ivf i i i i call you all the eyes <laughs> to get pregnant and I did four rounds of IVF, two of them stuck. And actually, interestingly enough, one of the rounds, I got pregnant with twins because the levels were like doubling, tripling, quadrupling really fast. And I was called at my first Latino hive in Napa. I was driving around and my endocrinologist called me. She's like, I'm so sorry, but the levels are dropping and you're going to miscarry. And it was terrible. I was like, 
dang, like, here I was, like, building up all this excitement. Twins, two in one shop, bang, bang, you know? Like, I was like, that's it, we'll close up shop after that. It would be wonderful. And then everything came to a crashing halt. Mm -hmm. So lost the twins, did two more rounds that did not stick, and that was when I needed another break. I was like, the, the, the drugs, the injections, the crazy mood swings, the money, okay? All of it was just like, ah, How much chaos. does it cost? IVF usually costs like 10000 a round. And they, like, insurance will cover up to a certain percentage. And thankfully, I was working in corporate at the time. But they don't cover the drugs. And the drugs are thousands, tens of thousands, depending on what the approach is. And each round of IVF, and this is something they also don't tell you, each round of IVF, according to, like, what's going on in your body, I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. They want to take a different approach each time. Like, mm. one round, we suppressed my immune system because they thought maybe I had an autoimmune disorder. And I was like, Okay, okay, let's try. So, like, you know, intravenously, they, they suppressed my immune system. I couldn't go near anybody coughing, sneezing, hay fever. I sound like the commercial for, like, freaking Dayquil. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't go near, like, I couldn't go anywhere near people with, you know, that kind of uh, anything. And uh, that didn't work. Then I was going to switch practices because I was with one practice. I'm like, okay, I'll try again. But again, you know, I'm a womb warrior, but like we needed a break. I also am one to recognize when I need to stop red light, collect myself. And I think it's okay to stop. You know, we're taught to keep going. Women, no, 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 you can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Like, no, sometimes we need a little like breaks, mm -hmm. literally breaks uh, for a break. And during that time, I also started seeing signs, like literal, like and figurative signs to like evaluate where I was religiously and spiritually. And I became Catholic against my father's will. Like he was really not happy about it. Um, so you were raised Jewish. I was raised Jewish. I was raised mixed. I have to say, like I wasn't bought mitzvahed, but like really deep in the culture. Okay. But also there was this Dominican side and I was going to the like Holy Communions and always took an interest in like, you know, the Catholic religious beliefs and practices. So I took RCIA classes, the Rite of Christian an initiation for adults it was mad cool every wednesday we would bring our little entomans cakes and like <laughs> it was like <laughs> like mad people like my age talking exchanging stories and then we would read the bible together and i was like what joseph did what like i was so hyped you know the book of job was like what i was it was mary magdalene did what like gangsta i was just like interpreting these stories and making not making them my own but like really connecting with them and being like there's some present day stuff that kind of happens just like this mm -hmm. and i also felt like i was getting closer and closer to god you know praying on the on the regs and going to church and it just felt right so i received all my holy sacraments in one day i had a sponsor i went about it the good old fashioned way and i became a roman catholic and i just felt like i knew how to pray better like i felt like not that there's any right or wrong way to pray but i wanted my own method i wanted some something systematic, something that I can go to in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, when I wake up, when I'm in the shower, when I needed to talk to God, like I'd be like, doot, doot, doot. hey God, yeah, different kind of conversation. This is, this is, feels good. Feels good. How you doing today? You know, <laughs> and just really connect with yeah. God and Jesus. And I tell you no lie, I got pregnant the good old fashioned way three months, almost to the date. Like I found out three months later that I got pregnant. From the day that you became a Catholic? Yeah, girl. Wow. And you know, the power of three, three is the holy trinity and just it, the number three exists a lot in the bible and i was just like whoa uh coupled with something else that i did i did something called botella de embarazo which literally translates to pregnancy in a bottle um que un tío like a, a uncle brought me but like somebody f gave it to him in dr it was like his neighbor like la vecina's friend who sells patelitos daughter's you know godmother's cousin made some kind of concoction <laughs> of like i don't even know what was in it but it was like a big like water bottle from dr wrapped in, al in aluminum foil so they could bring it through customs and it had a bunch of stuff floating around it like eye of newt like from Macbeth, like you know cow testicles i don't know what the hell was in it it tasted like armpit but 
I had to do a shot of it every night, coupled with remolacha um, and molasses. And I got pregnant, you know, but I also think, okay, you could do everything in the world, but the key ingredient is faith. And I had this renewed faith this time around. And so that's Donovan. Eight years later, I had my baby boy. And I was working at Heineken. And this ties back to the question you asked me before. That was when I made the transition, the shift, that pivot. It was a hard pivot from corporate to comedy. Because I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do everything that makes me happy. I'm a mom now. And I'm going to pursue my passion for comedy. No matter what it takes. No matter the pay cut. No matter the questions from my family, like, hold on, wait, you're going to go from being a marketing executive to a comedian? (laughs) Does that even make sense? Sonoro presents a production of Malca Studios. A la Latina, the playbook to succeed being your authentic self. This is your chance to get first-hand career advice from the most accomplished Latinas in corporate America. Those ready to share their secrets so that you can make it to the top in half the time. Those who shatter the glass ceilings not despite being Latinas, but because of it. Join Claudia Romo Edelman and myself, Cynthia Kleinbaum-Milner, as we interview executives from Google, Coca-Cola, Spotify, and more. Learn how to get promoted quickly, when is it okay to make a lateral move, and how to use your accent as your superpower. The time has come for us to rise to the top. Being Latina is our superpower. We are passionate. We are resilient. We are natural leaders. We are the next generation of C-suite executives in the making. Join A La Latina. A La Latina is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Mi gente, I've got the perfect freebie for you. So I just dropped a 17-page workbook to help you get your mind right, especially in this climate of so much uncertainty. So if you are an aspiring or current entrepreneur and you're just feeling stuck, you're not feeling too good about what the future holds and all the turmoil, the politics, all of it is just throwing you off your game, this workbook is actually going to act as a journal for you. It covers goal setting, efficiency tips, how to manage your time, financial management tips, strategies on how to wrap your head around the next big thing that's coming down the pipeline to bring you consistent revenue in your business. It covers what you should be doubling down on in terms of your well-being. And it is just my favorite jam-packed journal full of marketing and sales strategy to help you get clarity, but most importantly, to help you secure the big bag. So make sure to tap on the link in the show notes. I've linked it there so that you guys can can get really clear on the top hacks that you can put into play in 2024 to set yourself up for success. I hope you love it. Mi gente, I need your help. Look, the real game behind podcasts is we need to really understand our demo, aka you, our audience, so that when we go out to sponsors who help us put on this amazing show and deliver this content to you, that they can clearly understand who we serve and what is significant to you and what you value. And the only way for us to get that information is for you to give it to us. So we just created this survey. I'll put it in the show notes. It will take you less than three minutes, literally, but it will be so helpful for us to get a better understanding of what it is that you care about, what's important to you, what do you value. So that when we're out in these streets trying to secure the big bag and get sponsors for this show, they know exactly who our audience is and what you care about. So we can bring you the best products. We can bring you the best organizations that are out here serving the cultura, the community, you. So please take a moment and fill out the survey. I'll link it in the show notes. Appreciate you. It makes sense. (laughs) Right. And it did it, you know, and I was already in my mid 30s. This is like a jump that you make maybe like in your 20s, like BK, you know, like according to the stories and the textbooks. But no, I was like, I'm doing everything that's going to fulfill me and have me live this long life filled with glee. Bars. Bars. Okay. And, (laughs) And that's when it happened. So that's when I never went back. You know, I took my maternity leave and I I also was diagnosed with postpartum anxiety. I needed to deal with that too. And going back to corporate would have been a barrier. I felt instinctually. I would not have been able to take care of my mental working this high stress job and traveling always in the car or in a plane, carrying beers on my back and in the trunk everywhere, activating these amazing brands, which, you know, working, I worked on some really 
like iconic programs for the brand. The inaugural season of the NYCFC, like the New York City Fo- Football Club. That was so dope, like activating the brand at Yankee Stadium and like things like that I had to let go because that was also fulfilling. As a marketer, there's these fun programs that you sort of see from soup to nuts, like from concept to fruition. And you see the consumers enjoying it. And that gives me such a sense of just pride and like I did that I did that I helped do that you know I was part of a Mm -hmm. team Mm -hmm. and I love being part of a team that can like accomplish goals like that no pun intended goals (laughs) you know (laughs) and uh (laughs) not with you I know it just comes out and I can't turn it off I love it I'm sorry but it was so fulfilling. So I started, I got management, you know, uh, and I got management organically. I was just out there performing, doing my sketch comedy at the People's Improv Theater. And like this wonderful manager came up to me after and was just like, are you represented? And I was like, no. And so she started to represent me and send me out on self, uh, on auditions and a bunch of self tape opportunities. And I booked some really great things. One of which I'm still in production for, which is the Tuttle Twins, where I play Mrs. Tuttle. Um, I voiced the character of a Latina mom and it's based on a very successful book series and I'm in season three production for that. Ooh. It is so much fun. Shout out to everyone at Angel Studios. You can catch that on the Angel Studios app and on YouTube on YouTube and on Amazon um, and it's so fun. Um, you know, I, I booked like a great crime reenactment show. You can catch me on Diabolical season two on Identification Discovery where I get to murder a senior citizen for TV. <laughs> It was so great. But again, learning how to kill somebody on TV was so fun. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff, some commercials and things that I booked that I won't like be so braggadocious on your show about. But no, you know, Banging Our Cultura is about celebrating you. Thank you. And bringing that to light because there aren't enough platforms that are sharing those highlights yeah. and those stories and allowing our community to talk their shit. Okay, and I'm going to toot their shit. own horn. Okay, beep, beep. Uh, you can go to my IMDb. <laughs> it's Rachel Strauss, I, I, I. There's a bunch of Rachel Strausses out there. So I'm Rachel Strauss the third on IMDb if you want to see my credits and stuff. But I also <laughs> took a, a strong um, liking to writing. And this goes to like the underrepresentation of us in the media. I just saw like all these auditions and all these roles that I was going out for that I wasn't booking. And I'm like, oh. I don't look Latina enough. What are you kidding me? Like, I have to look the part. I sound her. Like, I sound like her. But what What do you mean? What does a Latina even look like? What, what does that even mean? Because we look so different. We're like this myriad of beautiful colors and shapes and sizes and vernaculars and accents and hair textures. Like, what? how could you even, how dare you put us in a box and classify us as one type and then at the time I was gordita like I was I was a thick mama you know I'm still a thick mama but I went through this like health you know this health journey um and I was going out when I was gordita I was going out for like the uh, girlfriend of the convict, you know, the like SVUs of like the girl who was like, knock, 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 Jose, quick, and cutting up the cocaine and dumping it in the toilet. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I don't even want to do this. Like, but I want to be on television. So this is what I got to do to be on television. I got to cut the bag of cocaine and dump it in the toilet with my boyfriend. Or like the girl who was like coming home from a long day of work and having to like go under the crime scene and her projects. Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> What if I want to be a biologist? What if I want to be the writer on a TV show? You know what I'm saying? So I started writing and I wrote this short film called The Swimmers, among other things, you know, a bunch of pilots and scripts and stuff. But I really wanted to, again, take this sadness in my life and turn that frown upside down and have other people laugh. So I wrote this dramedy called The Swimmers and it got accepted into the National Hispanic Media Coalition's Latinx Stream Writers Showcase where it was produced out in Hollywood and they got this amazing director, shout out to Michael Martinez and these amazing actors, shout out to Cesar Calmona and Ariana and these incredible, uh, an amazing cast and crew that I would never be able to pay for and they paid for everything. I really, like if there are any writers writers out there or actors that just want to level up, go to the nhmc.org. Uh, there are so many opportunities and incubator programs. I got to work with uh, development executives at NBC that took my little PDF and turned it into a film. And now the film is going through its film circuit run. I'm sorry, film festival circuit run. Um, I just got accepted into another one. Woohoo! 
it's it's going to be in the Glass Ceiling Breakers Showcase uh, Film Festival happening the weekend of June fifteenth, which is an all female film festival. Ooh, yeah, which I love so much. Um, I love being part of this like you know pea power. Uh, like <laughs> there's so much power. Pea power is so real, bro. Like so, it's part of that festival coming up, and I'm just excited to like further this this craft. You know mm-hmm. this this like knack for storytelling and telling of the stories like you mentioned that were not necessarily told yes and that were also t- told to sh- callate about so let's get back to the happy piece because i want to make sure that we drive this home for people if there's somebody out there who is contemplating leaving corporate but they're mm-hmm. scared because of the check because yeah. of the benefits and because of the hustle yeah. of having to like go after your checks. Yeah. What would be your advice to them? Because you had shared with me that, what do you call yourself? Rachel La Broca? What do you call <laughs> <laughs> There are times that Rachel La Loca is Rachel La Broca. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm like, again, paper chasing. <clears throat> now yeah. that I'm on my own, I have my own company and I got a paper chase. I got to like invoice clients and Mm -hmm. get my paper and sometimes you know you don't have that steady paycheck of every two weeks where you know you're going to get that salary Mm -hmm. so what is your advice because although and you know i know your journey is ebbs and flows so you be up up i know and then it'd be down so i get it so you're not always you know rachel la broca pero i will say that you're rich and happiness, yes. right? And yeah. that is priceless. Yeah. So what is your advice to someone who is staying in their nine to five, in their situation? It could be relationship wise because of money and because of the security blanket yeah. that they believe exists in the situation that they're in. A couple things, Victoria, I just think that you really need to evaluate what makes you happy. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be money when you really think about it. Money was buying me the bags that I loved and, you know, sending me on trips. I was traveling the world, you know, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Australia, Egypt. Yeah, girl. Okay. Shout out to the passport stamps. You know what I'm saying? Well, sidebar, every time I miscarried, I needed to travel somewhere where there was a wonder of the world. And that was how I found my destinations. I wanted to see either a natural or a man-made wonder of the world to put things in perspective. Like just when I thought it was the end of my world, I would see like Victoria Falls, the longest cascading waterfall on the planet in Zimbabwe, and just be reminded that my shit is small pebbles, yo. These are boulders. These are God's creations. And like, I need to just get back home and dust myself off and get back to it. But my advice would be to do some really strong and hard evaluation of what makes you happy. The trips are making me happy, yes, but like I could save for a trip as an independent contractor or freelancer or owner of a small business. That could be more of a long-term goal, whereas with that paycheck, I was able to book it like two weeks and call my homegirls that I travel with. Like, we're going to Australia, you know? (laughs) That's okay, though. That's just... That's just, there's a longer amount of time that I have to wait or anticipation of a trip. Budgeting is so key. Q4 last year, I was rachellabroca.com. I had no gigs coming in. My bank accounts were looking real sad. You know, they were calling me like, are you still alive? Because no deposits are coming in. So we just want to make sure you're still out there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm out here. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you could give me a line of credit or something real quick. Waive the service fees. Right. And that is a great point. Because I called Amex and I called TD Bank and I called Citizens Bank. And I was like, I've been rocking with y'all for a while. What can you do for me right now? And yes, they waived some of the fees. Yes, that's a, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, cause I wouldn't have, thank you. Um, <laughs> after an evaluation of what, what you can and can't do, then take action, put it on paper. And also your village is so important. Shout out to my village. I would not be able to do this without my mom and dad. With, oh, there's the voice getting shaky again. <laughs> my mom and dad, my kid's father, like everybody who's in my life who is wanting to see me advance, they are the, they have to be there and you have to bank on them. And I was not like, I guess, 
I could be a Leo sometimes where I'm like, no, I could do this on my own. I don't need nobody. But yes, I do. And I'm okay waving the white flag, you know, like yeah. surrender, SOS, socorro. Help. And that's okay. I need babysitting sometimes. So I'll call my homegirls, what you doing? I'll cook for you, you know? And and that's okay too, to just ask for help. And then define the goals. That's really important. Like, what were my goals? What are my goals? My goals are to establish these three pillars of my business, Latinos Out Loud, The Hilarious Show, and Rachel La Loca. Those are my three business units. Those are my three revenue streams. And that's very clear to me now. Whereas when I first started, I'm like, how am I going to make money on my, I don't know what I'm doing. So all these things were down on paper. And then the bank accounts and the LLCs and the lawyers and all of that you know, that falls into mm-hmm. budgeting, but you need these people and they are part of the village too. Shout out to all the abogadas on my team. Yes. Okay. Shout out to everybody who's like knowing my business and again, wanting to see it move forward. And there are still times where I'm like, okay, I cannot go out to eat for like a month. Okay. It's going to be salami in the weka and uh, maybe salami campesino. If you know it's campesino, quítalo de mi camino. Um, <laughs> You know, eggs all day or like avena, oatmeal. Like we can't go out for the steaks. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because the steaks are high and I cannot afford the actual filet mignon right now. But that's okay. I get the filet mignon next month. Okay. I think that's really what it takes. Just knowing, like you said, there's going to be these valleys, these, these lulls and then the highs, you know, where you, where I score a new client. And like, yes, I can like go out to eat and like buy myself the makeup that I need or like. Like when the U.S. <laughs> Census hires you to do a whole podcast oh during the gosh. election. Like, yeah. How cool is that? And yeah. this is what is so inspiring about your story. And thank you for your transparency because people will come on a platform and act as if no. they're making all this money and they're doing this and it's all happy times and everything is great dandy etc and i love that you have the strength and the p power to speak so vulnerably and transparently about your situation because you understand that when the highs are high honey they is high yeah. and when the lows are low they're low that's just what it is so Thank i appreciate you, you for you. for being that i would say resilient and strong and dope as hell to be able to do that because a lot of people out here fronting so appreciate you bringing that to banking on cultura because i want people to hear the truth behind the journey yeah. and like what it takes like you have been able to work on some incredible projects work with some incredible people and you found your happy you are constantly evolving you found god you're like in this creative utopia that people envy but they'll still get up and go to work because they're making six figures yeah but every day they hate their life like that's freaking dope i was there i was her every day i would like be so stressed and now that I think about it, maybe I was losing all them babies because I brought that anxiety and stress on myself. Your body knows when you're happy. Mm-hmm. Your reproductive system knows the same. Yeah. So maybe it was faith coupled with confidence, coupled with just dismissing the toxicity in my life. Mm-hmm. I worked for some crazy bosses that had targets on my back. Mm-hmm. And I would go to work and I would feel the target. Be like, hey, get it off. Get it off. Like, why? I'm a good person. What's happening here? But, like, I would take that home with me. Mm-hmm. And the sperm was probably like, nah, we ain't going to fertilize shit because <laughs> she's not happy. And we're not going to penetrate the walls of her eggs because she's not happy right now. <sighs> Maybe just, like, I, I needed to, like, talk to the yeah. sperm and talk to the eggs. Become one with the sperm. <laughs> right. My eggs were scrambling. They were like, no, we out. We are out. We're going to fall through your ovaries and fall through your fallopian tubes every month and not fertilize shit because you ain't happy. How are you going to be a happy mom? How are you going to bring this child to this planet if you're not even happy with yourself? What do you want, a miserable kid? No, senor. Mm. No, senora. Mm -hmm. I love it. So let's get into the Talk That Talk segment because you are a perfect person to talk about that. So... Earlier this week, I went on kind of like a mini rant about Jennifer Lopez (laughs) and the media hate train that Mm. is coming out 
and just literally tarnishing all her work, trying to come at her for funding her own project. Like, hello, that's super badass. Like, how dare you insinuate that that's like a form of weakness or whatever. And I started to really think about like, what harm is this doing to the macro community? Like, it might, yeah, whatever feelings you have towards Jade, though, let it be. But if you look at it, like, logically and think about, like, what is the impact of having one of the top Latina entertainers in the world being ridiculed and literally being on this media hate train? Like, what does that really mean for the community? And so... In this UCLA Hollywood report that you had sent me, which was really super interesting, which basically spoke about uh, the current state of Latinos in Hollywood, the statistic is only 4.4% of TV leads are Latino, and there are absolutely zero Latino CEOs or chairs of major studios and TV networks. So what does that mean? That means that the fact that JLo is where she is, given the statistics and given that there aren't any Latinos that are putting her on, she has to like fight tooth and nail herself, herself. What benefit does it add for our community coming at her the way that we are? I'm so glad you said that. And that was so educated. Shout out again to the National Hispanic Media Coalition who did the research, who put this media guide together. If you go to NHMC.org, you can find it there. It's really alarming. Okay. Let's talk about JLo and then maybe we can talk about the state of the industry real quick. Our girl from New York, from the Bronx, is out here with multiple revenue streams and businesses, yet our own people, which we're known to do are bringing her down. So we have some debunking of myths and also some challenges among our community. And it starts here. It starts at home. Let's just cut it out. Okay. First of all, she is such a businesswoman. She's such a great dancer. She's an actress. She's a singer. She's a multifaceted talent who's doing it and showing little girls, little Latina girls that they could do it too. She's showing me that I can do it. And I'm 40 something years old. Okay. Like, this is someone we should be putting on a platform, on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. I started watching J-Lo when she was a fly girl on In Living Color, trying to replicate her moves and stuff. (laughs) I seen her in the That's the Way Love Goes video, Mm -hmm. shout out to Janet Jackson. And I was just like trying to replicate. And I'm like, that's all it takes is Mm -hmm. elevating and Mm -hmm. showcasing and retweeting and reposting and going to see her films. Money Train is like one of my like most favorite films. I love Money Train. Enough. You know, she did a The Wedding Planner. The Wedding Planner. She did her whole documentary about the Super Bowl, Mm -hmm. which I thought was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And that was screened at Tribeca. And I had the luxury of being three rows behind her and watching it at the Tribeca Film Festival. Oh, but it's so fancy. Flex, flex. Okay. That was incredible to she like she showcased what the NFL put her through when all she wanted was the allotted time to her show and they tried to take some away from her mm-hmm. and then they told her that she needed to bring in a secondary act so she brought on her homegirl Shakira mm-hmm. but like the the barriers that they put in place again why NFL mm-hmm. this woman is bringing you a show and a half Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, and they were actually the highest viewed Super Bowl act. But then we had Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl and they trying to make it seem like Usher's the reason why they had the most viewers. But I mean, not to take away from Usher because he fine and he did his thing. And he did his thing. Yes, he uh, did. Roller skates. That was crazy. More people were definitely tuning in to football, period, because of Taylor Swift. Like, let's be for real. But prior to that, it was the J-Lo and Shakira halftime show yeah and you're right <laughs> that like, had the most viewers i talked to some of my peers and they hate on her Same. and i really can't understand why so let's just keep advocating for her is my advice let's get educated on what this woman is really doing because i feel like the haters look at her facade and like they ridicule and pick up the things that we really shouldn't be picking yeah. at like her relationships huh, let home go. that's her private business and who can't relate to that like all of us got things in our relationships that we're not proud of we're embarrassed by that we wish we never did that we regret like let's get it together like people putting themselves on a pedestal she's the whole business case but i want to get into the stats of the state of the industry because 
again, this is bigger than J-Lo. So it's talk disturbing. to me real quickly about the state of the industry and then we'll let people know where they can find you. Well, basically, if you go to see this report, you'll see that Latinos over-index like as moviegoers. We over-index in like the liking and loving of franchises like Fast and Furious. You know, Disney got the message. Disney's putting out all this content for us, by us, but also it's for everyone. It's universal. Like, I think there's a, st- a statistic in there that says that we're a fourth of all moviegoers. Yes. Yet less than 10% of us are on screen. Mm-hmm. And by behind the cameras and zero CEOs of major like studios. So, okay, here's what I'm doing to make a difference. Okay. I'll share that case study because I think we can all make a difference. I always say to myself, look, I'm trying to move the needle and whether I move the needle a 10th of a degree, it's still in the right direction. So if more of us start podcasts and write and share stories and submit to these incubator programs and try to cross over and get these mainstream executives, these non-Latino executives to like pay attention, we can do it together. We need to unite and do this and, and just keep being creative. I think we'll be able to do it. And I'm already seeing a shift. I have a good friend of mine, my former boss from people in Espanol, shout out to Fabian Castro. He's the executive vice president of multicultural marketing at Universal Pictures. He's making a difference. Shout out to Christian Mercado, a Latino, a Puerto Rican director who's killing it right now, who there was a film that he's got out now that he injected salsa music into. It's those little things that are moving the needle in the right direction. So here's how I'm doing it. I'm doing the Latinos Out Loud podcast and I'm interviewing Latino entertainment pros that are making strides so that they can share what they're doing on set behind the cameras like Chris Mercado. And those stories are going to be heard. You know, I don't have a, I don't have Joe Rogan listenership, but I feel like there are people listening that are like, Oh snap. I didn't know I could do that. College students who are like, Hmm, I'll maybe shift my career, shift my career trajectory rather, or maybe declare a major in filmmaking because now I'm seeing some of me doing it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we need to think long term and also get more of us in the pipeline, get more of us in the funnel, you Mm -hmm. know, because if you get, you know, how a funnel is, if we're on top, a lot of us are going to make it to the bottom of that funnel and get out there and produce and create the films for us by us. Mm -hmm. So there's a process here. Writing to me is really important right now because I want to write the characters that I want to see on television, you know, in films on podcasts, in books. I don't care where my writing goes. Yeah. I just want to see you and Mm -hmm. me. And I want to see the non-size four girl. Yeah. I was a size 14 for a really long time. And that's like the average size of women in the U.S. Marilyn Monroe is a size 14. But yet we don't see her depicted on screen. We need to see more of her. I knew she was a size 14. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what I'm hearing from you, and this is a takeaway from the audience, and then I want you to tell folks like where they can find you and be obsessed with you like I (laughs) So the takeaway here is that in order to move the needle ahead, you need to produce. Like, you need to get your creative juices running. You need to take the risk. Bet on yourself. Get to writing. Get to producing. Start the podcast. Write the book. You know, start your talk show. Whatever it is that you want to do, just start and do it because that's going to continuously push the needle forward. And if you're not a creative, support those that are doing it. Yes. I love that. Buy yes. movie tickets. Yes. Go to film festivals. Listen re- to the podcast. Re- repost. Share it. All, all of the it. things. Yes, all of all it. the things. Okay, Rachel. So tell people <laughs> where they can find you. Sure. You can follow me at Rachel La Loca, R-A-C-H-E, La Loca. And Latinos Out Loud, the podcast is on every platform. We're on YouTube, iHeart, Spotify, everywhere. Alexa. You can even ask Alexa for us. Um, and yeah, I have shows. I have an upcoming show at the People's Improv Theater if you're in New York on June 15th. Also, the film festival. The Glass Ceiling Breakers Film Festival is that weekend. But I think Instagram is probably the way to go. That's where I'm, it's like my billboard. That's where I put everything. But I'm on Twitter, the TikTok, the this, the, the LinkedIn, all of it. All the things. Yeah. Well, Mujer, thank you so much for being on Banging Out Cultura for your spirit, your vibrancy, your energy, your resilience, and exemplifying that there is no low of lows. You can always find your high. So thank you for that. Appreciate you. you. And thank you for tuning in to this episode. And I'll see you on the next one. Mi gente, did you enjoy this episode? Are you loving Banking on Cultura? Make sure to subscribe and follow us. Our goal is to grow this community so that we can all embrace our Latinidad 
Secure the big bag and never question our cultura ever again. Please also take a moment to leave us a review. I love reading your reviews. Let me know what you are thinking, what guests we should have on, and if there are any topics you would like me to cover. I appreciate you so much for being here. Te amo mucho, and I'll check you out in the next episode.